Good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, attending uh, this Monday's webinar. Uh, my name is Tony Butler. I'm one of the Life Sales Directors here, and I have Brent DeGroote on the line with me from One America, and we're going to be talking about um, a topic that uh, we really talk about quite a bit um, with our advisors, whether um, they're existing advisors or new advisors, and that's um, turning long-term care opportunities into uh, sales opportunities. So um, before we get started, a uh, couple of uh, things I want to talk to you guys about, and I'm sure if you've attended our webinars before, um, you're familiar with some of the things that um, IMS does offer. And for those of you that this is your first time on one of our webinars, I uh, want to highlight a few things. Um, and then if you have any additional questions, please feel free to give us a call. Be more than happy to uh, talk to you about this in greater detail. Uh, but here's a few ways that um, we can help you here at IMS make um, even more money. Um, one is our new producers builders, um, which as you see here, based on your production, um, there's uh, additional perks that we do offer um, for our agents. We've got the 100,000 to 50, 500, 750 and million dollar uh, producing levels. If you have any questions in regards to um, our new producers builders and how to grow your production, uh, please feel free to give us a call. We'd be more than happy to explain this in greater detail. We also have our IMS business builder and this is for our existing um, advisors kind of a referral program, if you will. Um, any agent that you do refer to us and they do get appointed with um, any of the carriers that we work with, uh, we do provide you with a one-time uh, $50 bonus on those referrals. Um, any subsequent business that they write, depending on the business, there is additional bonus for the referring agent. Again, if you have uh, questions on this, uh, we'd be more, happy than, more than happy to um, discuss this with you in greater detail. We offer back office support here, and we always like to let our advisors know we want you to work smarter, not harder. So what that entails is paperless contracting. Um, we do offer uh, sales coaching. Um, there are forms at your fingertips on our website, 24-hour um, website, which provides you with a lot of business building tools and resources. And we can also assist with case design for you, whether it's um, in the annuity arena or the life insurance arena. And speaking of our website, um, we have excellent sales tools available on our website. Um, if you're a life producing agent, we do have a term and guaranteed universal life uh, quoting tool to where you can run uh, quote comparisons. As I mentioned before, um, there are forms available online for us, for you, um, as well as us, obviously. Um, we do have uh, annuity and long-term care uh, product grid available for you. And the market is trending towards um, doing electronic applications um, now uh, more often than, than ever before. And for our agents, we have a couple of platforms that we utilize for the electronic applications, uh, one of which is IGO eApps Solutions, which is generally for our life producing agents. The majority of the carriers that we work with is on that platform. Um, we also have Firelight, which you can register um, to that platform from our website. And as you see here, um, here are the annuity carriers that are available on Firelight, as well as a few live carriers. If you haven't gotten registered on the Firelight platform, I strongly suggest that you reach out to us so we can get you registered, kind of walk you through how to do that, as well as um, on the life side, if you need assistance with IGO eApp Solutions, we can um, walk you through that process as well. Um, we also offer creative marketing solutions for you, whether it's in the um, turnkey agency or digital marketing solutions. What that means is we can provide additional help for you, the advisor, as far as growing your business. Um, now, whether that's in helping with newsletters or postcards, um, logo design, stationery, if you're looking to get into that digital marketing space and you need help with your website or help designing a website, we can assist you with that. Um, if this is something that you definitely were thinking about, um, 
but you would like more information on that, uh, please reach out to us, talk to your sales director. What we'd like to do is what's called a marketing analysis. It takes about 30 minutes to kind of go over um, how your business is looking currently, um, what you're looking to do with your business in the future, and then we can provide you uh, with some feedback on what we see are some areas of opportunities for you. We also offer our retirement analyzer uh, to our advisors. Um, it is free for qualifying advisors. As you see here, some of the things that it can assist you with, uh, with your clients is how would it affect my family if I enter into a nursing facility? Um, what are the possible solutions if my situation changes? Uh, things of that nature. Um, we do have a tutorial that we can um, provide for you on this if this is something that um, interest you, uh, definitely reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to uh, go over that with you. We also have our IMS Wealth Management team. So for your higher um, net worth clients, um, this is something that you can take a look at um, with um, the IMS Wealth Management team. Um, if there's some asset under management that uh, you would like to discuss, um, they have been and been very successful in um, increasing um, our advisors' revenue, help um, improve client retention, as well as strengthen client relationships. Um, what we like to be is a one-stop shop, as well as want our advisors to be a one-stop shop for um, their clients. So this is just another um, way to do that. Uh, reach out to us. Uh, we'd be more than happy to get you over to uh, Charles and his team, and they'd be more than happy to help you in that area. Um, also, Life and Annuity Academies. If you're familiar with Dimes, you know that um, we put on a Life and Annuity Academy. Um, this is a two-day training that we pay for. That's travel, hotel, um, food. Um, this is a great way to uh, get to know us better, as well as talk to some of our top producers on best practices. Um, as you see here, um, some of the things that we do discuss, the sales ideas and strategies, um, trends as far as uh, the annuity arena as well as the life uh, insurance arena. So if this is something that interests you, I do believe we do have a polling question that I want to kick up here. I want to get more information on that. Uh, let me see. Not sure if we did or not. Um, we do not. However, if this is something that does interest you, please reach out to us. We'll be able to provide more information for you. Just a few more things. There's a couple of uh, academies that we had discussed, one of which is uh, April 26th to the 28th. If you haven't received information on this or would like more information or if this does interest you, I know that we still have some spots available. Uh, definitely give us a holler. Um, it's being co-presented by Athene. It's gonna be um, at the Athene office in Des Moines. Uh, this is definitely a game changer um, we have found for advisors. We also have our Seaside Sanctuary uh, trip. As you see here, it's an 18-month qualification period. Uh, 4.5 million points are required uh, in order to uh, go on a trip. The qualification periods is from uh, July 1st of last year uh, to uh, December 31st of this year. And as you see, the uh, trip dates are, are listed here. So if you have questions on where you're at as far as qualifying, I know that we have several agents that have already qualified. Uh, give us a call, we'll be more than happy to discuss that with you. And with that, Brent, are you still there? I sure am, thanks, Tony. All right, I'm gonna change it over to you to be the presenter. Sounds good. While you're doing that, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, come on here today and talk to all of your advisors and producers. And for those that don't join us today, I want to thank you as well. Uh, certainly appreciate your time today. So with that, I'm going to blow this up and I'll probably have to switch screens really quick. So let me do that also. There we go. Okay. So yeah, as Tony said, uh, when he kicked it off here, you know, there's there can be some some challenges when looking uh, or working with your clients in long term care planning. And I'm here today to really talk about some ways that we can turn those challenges into 
opportunities and, and furthermore, uh, a plan for your clients to plan for any long-term care uh, potentials in their future. So before I get started, though, I did want to talk about uh, we are certainly an, uh, an asset-based LTC market leader. So when long-term care planning, there's a couple different ways. I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But uh, One America has been around for many, many years. Uh, as a, an insurance company, we can trace our roots back all the way to 1877. Uh, when it comes to the asset-based long-term care space, we've been in this arena now for 35 years. So that really just speaks to, you know, the expertise that we have in here. We are, uh, like I said, a market leader and one of the first to market with these types of planning options. We're A-plus rated from AM Best. Our current Comdex is 95. So any of those that focus on that, that just all speaks to our financial strength. We are a mutual insurance company, uh, all under our One, um, uh, One America umbrella. And uh, like I said, our first iteration of these asset-based solutions was actually uh, sold in 1988 under uh, a, a formerly owned company of ours called Golden Rule. So 1988, the year I graduated from high school, I guess I'll never, never forget that. So uh, with that, I just wanted to really cover, you know, the three common challenges that you'll probably run into anytime you're talking with your clients about planning for long-term care. And first and foremost, it's the self-insure or self-fund option now, uh, or, or objection, if you will, challenge. And, and I'm gonna caveat this just a little bit because I will say that is all encompassing. There could be a number of reasons that fit within this self-insure, self-fund. They may just be ignoring it altogether, don't wanna talk about it, don't wanna focus on potentially having the need for any long-term care services in their lifetime. The statistics out there are pretty great. I don't have any of those loaded in, in my presentation today, but uh, you know, from the government we hear, you know, if, if your clients are lucky enough to reach the age 65, there's a 70% chance that they're gonna need some form of long-term care services in their lifetime. So uh, again, a high likelihood um, so one of those could be just ignoring it. The other could be apathy. They just, you know, they've, they've heard about all the rate increases in the traditional market and they just don't want to do, you know, uh, anything. Sometimes it could be uh, a case that they believe that they've got enough money that they can self-insure. But even if, even if they do, you know, there, there's better ways to do it. Those, uh, really wealthy people out there understand the power of leverage and why not leverage or off shift some of the risk to your portfolio to an insurance company or other other people's money use other people's money for that and then the other thing i will say here is that you know sometimes we as advisors can tell our clients you know what you don't need to worry about that you've got plenty of money but again there's just that maybe better ways to do that and so I would caution you on that, and, and especially if it's a case that, well, I'm not really familiar with the long-term care marketplace or, or what's available out there. You don't have to be the expert. That's what IMS is here for. They, you've got a great resource uh, in IMS and all the marketers there that can certainly help you through this. So you don't have to be the expert here. I'm here to give you some, some good insight into what's available. And uh, I think it's vitally important that we talk to all of our clients at least plant that seed on planning for any uh, long-term care needs in the future. Okay, so that was number one. Uh, you know, lots of lots of ways that uh, that self-insured self-fund can come into play. Number two was the use it or lose it scenario, and and uh, you know I've been in this long-term care industry now for 21 years. Uh, 17 of that was with a traditional carrier, and. Again, this, that was a, a big objection that we'd run into all the time. Well, what if I put this plan in place and I never use this insurance? Well, we've got ways here at One America that we can get rid of that objection or that challenge overall. And then third is cost. So, you know, when we're talking costs, obviously there's lots of ways that we can put these plans together. We don't necessarily need to plan for the whole thing. If you do plan for the whole need, probably you're going to get priced right out of the market. And so we're seeing where 
most planning today is planning for maybe some home care, that sort of thing, uh, and using those numbers to, to put a plan in place. Obviously, when your clients do happen to need care, their financial situation is going to change. Their earmarked re retirement portfolio is going to change as well. You know, may not, um, you know, need that extra, you know, retirement home in, in Florida or Arizona, wherever that may be. They may, they may not be going there as much. May not need that second car. You know, there's uh, going to be other ways through their portfolio, through their um, retirement savings that they could certainly pick up some of the slack. So when cost comes into play, again, we're going to talk about really all three of these uh, common challenges throughout the solutions that we have here today. So first and foremost, like I said, the, the probably the largest objection to putting any type of plan in for planning for long-term care is the concept of self-funding. You know, I'm just going to self-fund this risk. I don't want to uh, do anything else. Let's just self-fund. Well, you know, here's a very well-balanced portfolio, right? So let's say we've got a, uh, a couple and uh, one of them starts to need care. So in that first year, uh, it was 125000 out of that well-balanced portfolio. You know, certainly drew from their retirement portfolio. Is that going to impact them greatly? No, it really isn't. But what happens when they start to need more years of care or both of them happen to start going on claim? You can see how quickly this well-balanced portfolio gets eaten up. And so is self-funding the best way to do that? I'm going to challenge you and say, no, it's not. There are much better ways to plan for this risk. And I'll talk about those uh, in more detail here in just a moment. So when I mentioned, you know, planning for any long-term care services, really kind of two types of planning, uh, that traditional health-based, the use it or lose it objection that I mentioned early on. Uh, again, I spent many years in uh, the traditional role because uh, that was primarily what was being uh, sold out there or purchased from the clients. They understood that they needed to plan for long-term care. My parents, same way, my, myself, I have a traditional policy also. Um, we'll soon be adding some asset base to it, but uh, yes, the that was just kind of what was front and center, if you will, in the industry. Even though for 35 years now, we've had these asset-based solutions. And if I look at the other uh, type of planning option, you know, this asset-based solutions really heads out that uh, use it or lose it objection. And it really also addresses that, that apathy or I can self-fund because we're just going to use a portion of the portfolio to create a great plan that will protect the rest of the portfolio. So there's a longstanding um, phrase that we use here at One America, live, quit, or die. You are going to get something for the premium dollars that you allocate towards a long-term care plan. And that, as advisors, are what we really like to see, really like to hear for our customers, is that we want to make sure that our clients are covered, protecting their portfolio, but you know, always getting something if they never need that care. Because there is a likelihood that there there uh, or a possibility that they may never need care. So the life is covered, the care is covered, their decision is covered. So live, quit, or die. They're always going to get something with this asset-based plan that they put in place. So I'm not sure uh, all of those that are on the line today how many times you've seen our solutions. Uh, One America's Care Solutions is our portfolio overall, but it's all basically the same. I like to simplify it as much as I can because we can get really into the weeds. We have lots of options within this uh, Care Solutions portfolio, but I think the simplify it makes it the, the, the best way for anybody new to the options that we have to understand. And certainly with the clients that you're talking to, to really present this concept to as well. So I'm going to simplify it as much as possible. First and foremost, it starts with a base policy. You can see there on the left. And we have two different ways that we can put a base policy in play for these 
asset-based solutions, either a life insurance policy, which we call asset care, or an annuity, which we call annuity care. So this is their asset, right? So this is the client's asset. That's what they're, they're purchasing or uh, using really first if that long-term care need happens to arise. However, if they don't need that, any of the death benefits, remainder of the death benefits, cash value in the annuity, anything that's left gets passed on to their named beneficiaries. So this is a great way to put a protection plan in place, yet also leave a legacy if you never need it. Uh, again, wonderful ways to plan for long-term care. Now, that's the base policy, so that's their asset, if you will. We also have what we call uh, a rider or a continuation of benefits rider, and that says if they exhaust their base policy, so lo and behold, they do need long-term care services, they certainly take out of that base policy their asset first, but if they exhaust that, the rider kicks in and continues that same income stream specifically for those LTC expenditures, and we've got options to go up to a lifetime of uh, benefits for them. So really benefits that they could never run out of. So let's look at that just a little bit. When I talk about lifetime, and, and I'm a huge proponent of lifetime, you know, back in my days in the traditional space, for, for many, many years, we had lifetime benefits that were available. And that was something that I always preached to any of the advisors, insurance professionals that I was talking to, any of the, you know, general public that I was talking to about long-term care planning, lifetime benefits. It's very important because nobody knows how long that care need is going to be. So when we're talking asset-based here with One America, again, here's that well-balanced portfolio that I talked about, right? But a great way hitting some of those challenges in, in form of the cost, well, why don't we just take a portion of that well-balanced portfolio today and we'll put a plan in place. So by taking, just peeling off a portion of that portfolio, we can create this base policy, if you will. Again, it will have a cash value if it's an annuity. It'll have a death benefit if it's the life insurance plan. But both of those are payable for any long-term care services that may be needed in the future. Not only that, we can add that rider, that continuation of benefits rider, that can provide a lifetime income stream specifically for those long-term care expenditures. And that's whether we're doing it on a single individual or in our case, one of the things that differentiates from our, us from our competitors is we've got the ability to do a joint policy, meaning putting both spouses or partners, whatever the state recognizes, on one policy, giving them one pool to access, and then adding this lifetime rider to continue that same income stream for as long as both of them would need. So very important here. I'm so happy to be back to One America where we have these lifetime benefits because I think that is incredibly important, especially when we're talking with spouses. Now, let's look at asset care, our life insurance chassis. I'm not going to go through our whole portfolio today. I didn't want to just mar you down with all these details, but I did want to give you some, some really good planning ideas, if you will. So first and foremost, one of the other challenges that I talked about was cost, right? So yes, we can just reposition a por portion of the portfolio, but my, maybe not every client is able to do that. You know, maybe they need to create an ongoing premium. So we've come up with a number of ways that we can do this. These asset-based solutions were all repositioned products or, or single premium products when they first started but we recognize that not everybody has that, so we've got now options to uh, look past just the single pay. So we've got options to five pay, 10 pay, 20 pay, or pay to age 95. That is our, our annual option, if you will. So, and as a matter of fact, looking back at what, um, to, uh, 2022, looking back at all the plans that were put in place recently, in 2022, 66% of our business 
was on an annual pay basis. So we're seeing more and more of these annual pay type of solutions being put in place. Now, you can see the issue ages here from age 35 up to age 80. No other company out there offers that breadth of planning ages to plan into. So again, lots of ways that we differentiate ourselves from the competition. One of the biggest things that I like to point out about any recurring premium situation is that we've got a waiver of premium built in. Now, if it's a single pay, right, there's no other premiums due. But any of these recurring premiums, let's say, again, we've got a, a couple situation and one of those uh, couples go on claim and we've still got recurring premiums that are due. Once that person goes on claim, satisfies the elimination period, waiver of premium kicks in. So no premiums would be due as long as that person's on claim. So I think that's another big reason. If we're looking at the economy today, there's not a lot of people that want to part with a, a large sum of money. So they're putting in these recurring premiums uh, type plans and have that waiver built in in case somebody would happen to go on claim. So where are they typically funded? You know, earned income, pension income, investment income. That's kind of how these um, recurring premium solutions we put in play. But I really want to focus on one that we're getting a lot of interest in and seeing a lot of business in as well. And it is really using qualified funds. So I'm going to call this the qualified fund solution. We call it asset care annuity funding. Um, but again, I'll, I'll just kind of talk about it more in a qualified scenario. Most long-term care plans out there cannot be plan or, uh, paid for by qualified dollars. We've created a really simple one and done solution that you can use qualified dollars. And I'm going to talk more about that here in just a little bit. But what I want to point out is a little bit of the age difference here. Again, we put in a, uh, the, the bottom end, if you will, the youngest you could do this planning solution at 59 and a half up to age 80. Why? We don't want somebody to invade their qualified dollars and get that 10% penalty if they're under 59 and a half. Now I've got some more um, ideas on that in just a minute, but I uh, did want to just quickly point out that age difference there. Now where do we typically find these? Again, it's a personal IRA, it's a 401k, 403bs. We can, we can even fund these with non-qualified annuities. We don't do that as much. Typically we're finding this with qualified dollars and that's really what I'm gonna focus this portion of it on. So why qualified funds? Well, look, you know, uh, you know, for, for consumers, it's really, you can, we can take one spouse's qualified source and create a plan for both of them because we're the only asset-based carrier that has that joint policy solution. So great way to use one spouse's qualified dollars and create a plan for both of them. Utilize idle, idle dollars. I don't know if it's necessarily idle, although they are dwindling over the uh, uh, past high, or certainly the market is very value, uh, uh, excuse me, it's very volatile. We're gonna spread out taxation, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. And I'm also gonna come back to this last bullet, RMDs and inherited IRAs. So something to really kind of put in your quiver, if you will, when looking at this type of solution. So. You know, for any of the advisors, insurance professionals on this presentation today, look, why is it good for you? This market is huge. Uh, these numbers are as of 2020, $8.8 .8 trillion in defined contribution plans. So a huge market to go after as far as planning for any of your long-term care needs. So I wanted to dive in just a little bit further into this solution to kind of show you how it works. So I'm gonna give you a quick hypothetical here. I've got a male and female, both age 60. What we're gonna do is put this planning solution in place. And I'm gonna say that we have a current IRA, and I'm gonna call it her IRA. She has a current IRA of $200,000. And that's what we're gonna to use to put this solution in play. Now I'm gonna kind of show you how this works. I like this hourglass image because to, to a certain degree, that's exactly the way this plan works. It's not gonna come out sand by sand, one piece at a time. It's actually gonna come out in 10 year chunks, which I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But I think this does a good uh, 
way of illustrating exactly the way this plan works. So we're going to take her current IRA of 200000 We're going to do a direct rollover. So trustee to trustee rollover, no taxation there. But when we do that, we're going to put it into a One America qualified annuity, and we're going to give it a 25% bonus right off the bat. So that 200000 now becomes a $250,000 pool that we're going to use to fund basically a 10-pay base and rider solution. Remember, I talked about the base is their asset. The rider is really the insurance company's money that will continue that income stream for uh, up to the lifetime in, in this particular example. So how do we do that? So we've got that now $250,000. We're going to split that into 10 equal parts. When we do, that's going to fund this 10-pay base and rider solution. And that's going to be coming from a qualified source to a non-qualified source, right? So realize that this 25,000, these 10 equal parts to fund this 10 pay base and rider solution are a taxable distribution. So you do need to understand that and make sure that you uh, pass that along to the clients that you uh, talk to about this uh, particular solution. But we're spreading that taxation out now. It's not just a one time when they're bringing over that 200,000, we're spreading that out over 10 years and giving it that 25% bonus. Can that go to help to pay any of those taxes? Sure it can. So really like the solution, spreading out that, that taxation over the 10 years, and that's kind of how it works. Now let me show you a little bit deeper how this works as well. So remember, um, what we're doing here is putting in a 10 pay base and rider solution. So that base policy will pay out over 33 months if they ever need it. So we're using a 3% uh, acceleration of that, that, that death benefit. So the single premium came over, if you will. Um, that We leveraged that in terms of the face amount. So 267,236 as far as the face amount of that life policy. That's the death benefit, if you will. But remember, we gave it that 50,000 bonus, that 25% bonus opportunity. So gave it an extra 50,000. We're gonna break that into 10 equal parts. So we're gonna show that distribution of 25,000 to fund each year of the 10 years for this base and rider solution. What did that buy this couple? Over $8,000 per person of LTC benefits per month. That's per person per month. So on an annual benefit, we're talking 96,204. So how quickly are we really recouping this, this uh, one-time distribution of a $200,000 IRA? I mean, essentially, if she needs one year of care or maybe a little bit more and he needs one year of care, we're already back to zero. Uh, if they need anything more than that, they're in you know, the green, if you will, or in the black, I should say. So um, really a great way to provide long-term care planning here. Now I want to get a little bit further into the weeds only because there's a couple ideas I want to uh, point out. And I want to show you kind of the quote output from this solution. So what we've done here on the left-hand side. So this is essentially, if you're getting quotes from IMS or you're running them yourself, I mean, that's really up to, to you and IMS. But likely if you're going to IMS, you're gonna get these the, the quote output here. This is page three on the left-hand side, page four on the right. So uh, this is kind of where I would use uh, with the clients because I think we've laid this out fairly uh, understandably, if you will. However, the biggest question that I get is on the very top here, this total initial premium, where it says 25,000. And clients will often ask, well, I just gave a $200,000 IRA. We do list that down below here in the premium, so that's where we show that, that 200,000 coming over. But remember, what this initial premium is, is the 25,000 funding the base and rider solution over the 10 years. So I like to point that out just in case there's any confusion or you get questions on that. Below that, it just shows the total face amount that's available, death benefit that's for them. Of course, that's, that face amount, their asset is going to be used first if they need any long-term care. 
So on this uh, kind of arrow timeline, if you will, that'll show that, you know, one that that claim first arises day one, they're going to invade that face amount payable for long term care. However, if they exhaust that, that's when that continuation of benefits rider kicks in and will continue that same income stream for both of them as long as they need it. So that's what talks about uh, here for the unlimited amount. So again, we're showing that per person over $8,000 per month. So if they both happen to be on claim, they could pay even more, over $16,000 per month if they both happen to be on claim. So I like to point that out as well. Now that will pay down that face amount quicker if they're both happen to be on claim, but just wanted to point out that they both could be. So again, your single pay amount here of the, the 200,000 that came over, we're also gonna split out both the life premium and the LTC premium. I don't have time to get into this today, but any of your business owner clients, I will say this is a great scenario to talk to them about because LTC premiums, if run through the business, depending on how they file, has a, a good ability to be uh, tax deductible for them. So it really depends on if they're a pass-through entity or a C-Corp. But again, that uh, we, we break this LTC premium out because that can be uh, deductible for them. Any questions on that, reach out to IMS. I'm happy to talk through that with you at uh, a further length. Or again, I've given them uh, all uh, the information around that as well. So please reach out to them if you have any other questions on that. Now, over to the features and benefits, because again, I really want to kind of point this out, that base policy is going to pay out over 33 months. That was the 3% acceleration that we have. But then there's that lifetime COB rider that's here. I have added no inflation to this example, but we do have inflation options. So if, if you feel it very important to add inflation, we can add inflation. We've got uh, really four option choices for you, a 3% and a 5% um, compound inflation for life or a 3% or 5% compound for 20 years and then levels off. So uh, wanted to talk about that. I did not show it here. Another you know, belief here that we have at One America is duration versus inflation, making sure that they have that income stream specifically for those long-term care expenditures as long as they would ever need versus paying for it for uh, the inflation portion. But again, we've got that and we can add that as well. I just didn't build that into the, uh, the premiums here. The last thing that I really want to point out on the left-hand side is at the very bottom, waiver of premium. Why is that? This is still a one and done solution, right? Well, because it's funding over 10 years, it is a recurring premium scenario. So let's flip over to the uh, right hand side here and you can see where those over 10 years, that $25,000 distribution, $25, distribution is paying for that base and rider solution. Uh, one thing that I'll point out here with that waiver of premium, let's say, Gosh, in year seven, one of them needs care. Well, once they go on claim and have satisfied that elimination period, waiver would kick in here. So the other th remaining three years, the distribution would still happen, but it's gonna go directly to the clients. So they're gonna get that $25,000 versus funding the uh, base and rider solution. And that's where that waiver kicks in. So I really like to point that out because now they can use that extra uh, extra money now for uh, further care or other types of uh, scenarios. So that distribution would come to them versus funding because of the waiver portion. Uh, if I further on here into the right-hand side, if I look at the total cash surrender value, that is gonna build up, uh, uh, well, excuse me, it is going to dwindle over the first nine years because of the surrender charges that are on here, but then build up eventually to the full face amount uh, here on this particular policy. Another area where I get a lot of questions is on the total death benefit, because we know that the death benefit is the 267 and change, if you will, but early in the years, it's actually higher than that. Why is that? Another little arrow I wanna really kind of point out. 
let's say this is a again this is a joint policy right we have a, a male female uh covered in this policy joint second to die but let's say in year three they both happen to perish in a car wreck horrible situation but they've got the named beneficiaries here so what's going to happen they're going to get the full death benefit of the 267 236 plus the remainder in that qualified annuity so that two 267 would come free, uh, come tax free to their beneficiaries, which is nice. There will be some slight taxation because it coming out of the, the other portions coming out of the annuity that was a qualified source. So there's slight taxation there, but they're actually getting more, even more into this policy than they put into. So again, I like to point out that that is, um, you know, will, will ultimately make the, the death benefit, but, Early on, if there is an early demise, they can actually get more to their beneficiaries than what was originally planned. If I look forward, it's just going to show the unlimited benefit balance. And again, because I didn't have any inflation, the the eighty uh, over eight thousand dollars per person per month uh, stays the same. So, a couple things that I want to leave you with. Again, remember why use you know annuity uh, funded whole life. Well, the majority of U.S. savings are in qualified sources. So why not use a portion of their qualified sources today to protect the rest of their portfolio, first and foremost, and create that lifetime income stream should they ever need any long-term care services? That, and if they never do, you've also created that legacy for their uh, named beneficiaries. Remember, we also give it that 25% bonus right off the top that can help with any, uh, help with any of the taxation that, that happens, but we do spread that taxation out over the 10 years, not taking it all at one time. Now, I, the example that I showed you was a couple age 60, but what if we're planning later in life? We, we certainly have options that go all the way up through age 80 that we can plan with these types of solutions. So let's say this, you have a client who hasn't planned for their long-term care or really is looking for ways that to, to satisfy their RMD uh, calculation. They don't need their RMDs for income. Putting this plan in place, that distribution that happens over those 10 years is RMD friendly. So it's not like setting up a separate SPIA where you can only take that RMD calculation the first year and the other nine, you're, you're, you're out. Because we're doing it as an income rider here, every, uh, all, all 10 of those years would be RMD friendly in those calculations. So a good way to either plan or help any of your clients uh, with that RMD calculation if they don't need that RMD for income. Waiver premium, I kind of talked about that. And the last piece that I really want to talk about here is inherited IRAs. You know, the, the changes to the SECURE Act originally said, look, the stretch IRA is gone. Now, any non-spousal inherited IRA must be drained over 10 years. So with that, what happens? Well, we have to say that, it, it, it you know, non-spousals must be drained in 10 years. So this particular solution fits very well in that. Not only that, the SECURE Act said if it was somebody that was uh, under age 59 and a half, that 10% penalty would not apply. So great way to look at that. Now I've got just a couple minutes left and I wanted to really get into the annuity care solution as well and really hit on another tax uh, savings way of planning for long-term care. The annuity market is huge as well, not quite as big as the defined contribution market, but again, still a huge, huge market. And really, there's, there's four main reasons that people typically buy annuities. And you know all four of them. The fourth one is one that really seems to be something that, that we find a lot of. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you some some poll questions here in just uh, a minute, or a poll that we did, not questions for you, but some results of some of that poll. But I always like to say this, is that client, client's non-qualified annuity where it should be? Why? Because so many of those clients that have those non-qualified annuities 
plan to use it for really a catastrophic illness. So here's a Gallup poll that we did a number of years ago. 83% plan to use their annuity to avoid being a financial burden on their children. 73% say they want to use it in case of a catastrophic illness or, or nursing home care. So again, that's why they're using these emergency funds, if you will. So the Pension Protection Act really gave us a great way for planning for long-term care. And simply, it just has to talk to uh, a, a simple question for your clients. You know, do you have any non-qualified annuities that I'm not aware of? You know, sometimes uh, they're working with multiple advisors. Or if you know that they've got non-qualified annuities, you can look at that client and say, would this be a great way to put in a long-term care plan? Well, what am I talking about? Well, basically what I'm talking about here is the Pension Protection Act allowed for a 1035 exchange of an existing non-qualified annuity to get rid or shed all of the taxable gain in that contract if put into a qualified uh, uh, non-qualified annuity, which all of the solutions that we have here at One America are. So essentially they've got their cost basis, right? So maybe bought this plan many years ago, paid 50000 that's their cost basis. But over the years, we've got now another 100000 in gain. Well, that was all taxable. And if they're just going to leave that in their portfolio and, and use it only when they need long-term care services, all of that gain is going to be taxable. However, if they just 1035 it into one of our annuity care solutions, all of that now becomes income tax free if used for long term care. And again, we can do add that continuation of benefits rider as well. So the last thing that I really want to focus here on, uh, just in the interest of time, is when we're 1035 exchanging, we know we have to uh, play by rules, right? It must be a like for like exchange. So many times these are individual non-qualified annuities, but they really want to use that for both them and their spouse, right? So we have the ability to 1035 exchange, leave it as a uh, single person owned annuity, but add an eligible individual now really giving joint ownerships to those benefits for any long-term care services. So we've got a number of solutions that are available uh, in the uh, annuity suite. I'm not going to go into those today. As a matter of fact, just due to time, I am going to jump forward here and leave you with one last thing because there Maybe some of you heard about the Washington State uh, somewhat, I will call it a debacle, maybe that's not the, the, uh, the moniker that they would give it, but uh, there are new taxes coming to a number of states or proposed legislation for that. And are you working in one of those states? You need to be aware of this. So the Washington State CARES Act basically put a long-term care plan in place for all of their constituents by taxing all of the um, uh, W-2 employees 18 and older. It gave a very minimal amount, but it was going to be an, an ongoing tax for any of these 18 years or older over a 10-year vesting period. They had to have a long-term care plan in place by November of 2021. So that's as much as I'm going to say about that. It, it created a whole nightmare for the LTC industry because everybody was rushing to get a plan to avoid this tax. The reason I mention this is that there are more states that are going to be adding these types of, uh, or there's already legislation within these states that they're looking to add a tax. If you're in any one of these states, you need to be aware of it. And quite honestly, they're not going to put a forward looking date on that. So it's vitally important that you plan with your clients now because once those, those laws go into effect, there will be no buying a, a future policy to avoid any of that taxation. So again, vitally important if you're in any of these other 13 states, they're in, in I'll call that orange, 
that you're talking to your clients now and putting a long-term care plan in place because that's the way that they're going to be able to potentially avoid that extra tax that those states are looking for. So with that, um, Tony, I'm going to turn it back to you, but I, I am going to say quickly thank you for all of those that came out for their time and attention today. But Tony, is there any questions or ways that you want to wrap up here? Yeah, we do have some questions. So I'm going to switch this back over to me here real quick. You bet. Can you see my screen? Uh, that I can. Okay. All right. So real quick, um, want to point out that the 2023 uh, first quarter newsletter is going to be hitting um, our advisors' mailbox soon. So uh, be on the lookout for that. So as far as questions are concerned, looks like I've got a uh, common concern for my clients are reimbursements claiming method that add a, I'm sorry, I got to scroll through this, add a lot of burden to seniors. How do you overcome those objections? You know, that's a great question. And thank you for bringing that up. We are a reimbursement contract versus an indemnity contract. So I think that that's really what uh, the, the antithesis of that question is. And I, I really want to caution you on that. Um, at first glance, indemnity looks like it would be the easiest for any uh, consumer situation out there, right? We're just going to give you the money up front. That's what indemnity says. Whatever your monthly amount is, we'll give it to you up front. You do with it what you want. No questions asked. Nothing more to do. On the reimbursement side, they look at that and they say, well, gosh, now I've got to save receipts and, and uh, submit them to the insurance company to be reimbursed for that. That looks like it's much more work. Let me flip the switch here just a little bit. Why do I say that? On our reimbursement contracts, we coordinate with any of the providers. So once they've got that provider set up, we bill the, the provider directly. They... Uh, or, or excuse me, they bill us directly, we pay them directly, and then we send an EOB to the family. Not necessarily the, the person that's receiving care, they're, they're not gonna be the ones that are really administering much of that claim. But we send it to the family so they know what's going on with their policy. So very simple, no saving receipts, no, no doing anything that's kind of thought about when you hear the word reimbursement. So very simple. Now, on an indemnity basis, here's what happens. Yes, they would get that money up front. The, the, uh, the family then can be, you know, do with it what they want. However, when they start paying for any of that care need, there's a little known, little known um, government program out there that might be very interested in knowing who is getting that money. So if they pay over $2,400 a year, they are now an in-home employer if they're receiving care at home. Um, and if that's the case, now they've got to fill out uh, certain forms for the IRS. They're going to follow that money trail to see who they, they can tax. That's saving receipts, providing those to the IRS to, to show that paper trail. So it's really just the inverse of what you think about where indemnity sounds like it's much easier, it actually can create a lot more headaches for any of those seniors that are dealing with it, where the reimbursement contract is very simply, we coordinate with those providers and uh, nothing more is due for the senior or those families. So thank you for bringing that up. That is a, a great question. Brent, to add to that, then would that cause an issue for someone if I'm hearing you correctly, will cause an issue for someone that's receiving care, extended care, correct? Because the the longer they're receiving care, the more money it's going to cost. Or am I off That is on? correct. Okay. Yep. Nope. You you are correct there. The other thing that I didn't mention, you know, if they're ever going to go over with that indemnified amount, if they're going to go over the per diem amount, which the IRS sets every year, um, then that's going to be a taxable event for them as well. So. Uh, the reimbursement, you're always just reimbursed up to, uh, you know, the, the limits of your policy. 
and any reimbursement, there is no taxation. So you don't have to worry about that per diem limit as well. Gotcha. Um, got another question for you. 25K per year or 10 years is taxable? And I think this is going that to would, what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that, that qualified, the qualified solution. Yep. So, so we spread that taxation out over those 10 years. Correct. So that distribution going from the qualified source, the qualified annuity to fund that 10 pay base and rider solution, that is taxable. So the clients will get an LPC 1099 for that distribution. But remember, if they're the age of majority, that can be used in their RMD calculations. And we also give that 25% bonus up front that if they're not eligible for the RMD or, or using that for RMD calculations, uh, you know, that bonus certainly helps with that taxation piece as well. Okay, I've got another one here that I can answer. Actually, they're asking, is this going to be recorded? Yes, it is being recorded and it will be uh, available on our um, IMS uh, YouTube page. I'll make sure to get the recording out to you. All right, uh, looks like we've got a kind of another question. I think that piggybacks off of what you just answered. After 10 years, in your example, is only 267,000, I think it says CV, so I'm assuming cash value. Yes, once they reach um, you know, that 10th year, that annuity distribution has all been uh, has all now funded the 10 pay base and rider solution. So yes, the death benefit would be the amount that would be payable to any beneficiary. Okay, and we've got is qualified fund options available in California and New York? Uh, it is available in California. However, we do a little bit of a different situation there. Uh, it's a 20 pay versus a 10 pay. So if you need more information in California, uh, you know, let us know. We can we can get you that information. New York, we do not offer any solutions in New York, and I don't foresee anywhere in the near future that we are going to be. So, um, a good question. All right, and then we're back to the other one. Uh, when will the taxes be due? And I'm assuming this is back to again your scenario on that 10 pay. Yep, so when that first distribution happens in that year, that 1099 will generate for the, the taxation or the taxes for that year. So, um, you know, uh, assuming that the first distribution happened, call it this year, 2023, when they're doing their 2024 taxes for 23, that they're going to they're gonna see that uh, distribution and that amount would be uh, a 1099 for that. And then I'm not sure on this one. So is there anything needed to qualify for the bonus? Uh, no, uh, no extra qualifications, just that initial transfer, that direct rollover. And we're going to give it that 25% bonus right off the bat. All right. Rolling through these pretty quick. Now, I should say, they still have to qualify, health qualify for the plan. So, so maybe that was the question. I, I just want to make sure that I that I did say that. You know, on our underwriting basis, the 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 nice thing that I'll add there is that we can actually table rate up to table eight, whereas our competitors are just accept or reject. We can table rate up to table eight and up to table four still our preferred rates. Okay. All right, looks like that's it. Uh, from my end, I just have a few polling questions uh, for everyone. If you could just bear with me just a few more minutes. Um, first thing that I wanna ask is, if you'd like more information on the topics that we discussed today, uh, please respond to that and make sure to get you more information or reach out and answer any questions that you may have. So I'll leave this open. Um, to allow some time for everyone to respond.
Play this out for a couple of more seconds. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that down. Next polling question. Do you have any clients that you see that this would be an immediate need for um, that we can discuss? Go ahead and respond to that. And we will definitely reach out to you. Looks like we've got quite a few. So we'll be giving you a call. Leave this up just Good. a few more seconds. All right, looks like we've got everybody to respond. And then lastly, most importantly, if you're not appointed with One America and you're looking to get appointed, uh, please respond to that polling question. And there are quite a few that are looking to do that as well, Brent. So that's a good thing as well. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, I'll leave this up for a few more seconds. Okay, we'll close that out. So any additional questions? Because a lot of times what will happen is we'll get done with the webinar and someone will go, oh, shoot, uh, I meant to ask this or you know, a thought popped in their head. So with that, uh, you can reach out to any one of the live sales directors. Um, as you see here, um, here's my contact information as far as email. Um, we also have Trina Murray and Beth Rickliffs who are in our Topeka office. Those are their email addresses. Or you can just reach out to us by giving us a call on our toll-free number 800-255-5055 and ask to speak to anyone in the life sales department. Um, you can follow us or like us on Facebook or LinkedIn um, where you can obtain um, this content as well as other content that we've made available from previous uh, webinars. Um, we always uh, post different sales ideas and strategies on both of these social media platforms. So with that, Brent, any final words? Well, I'm just going to say once again, thank you for the opportunity to speak to all the advisors today. And, and uh, again, thank you for your time and their time as well. Thanks, Brent. Thank you, everyone. I know everybody's time is valuable as well as busy. So we always appreciate it um, when we have our advisors, whether new, old, or whatever, um, uh, attend our webinars. I think um, we provide valuable information uh, to help you grow your business. So with that, thanks again, everyone, and everyone have a great week. Thanks.